Do you love spy books, movies, and TV? Then the Spyberry podcast is for you. Hello and welcome to Spybury. Welcome back to the James Bond Book Club. Today we are tackling For Your Eyes Only by Ian Fleming. Welcome to David Craggs. How are you, David? I'm fine. I'm very well, thanks, Shane. Very well. Very well. Fantastic. We're also joined by author Andy Onyx. How are you, Andy? Oh, fine. Thank you, Shane. Good evening. Good evening. Good to you. And we're also... Uh, Honour to have with us Head Honcho at the Hildebrand Rarity Facebook group, one of the best Facebook communities to talk all things James Bond, Mr. Ian Douglas. How are you, Ian? Hello, Shane. I'm very well, thanks. Yeah, nice to be joining you all. So it's 1960. We had Goldfinger last. What's uh, You're connected with him, David. I know you, you, you meet Ian on occasion because you move in those circles. What's What's he been up to since Goldfinger came out? Well, I saw the old buffer last week, actually, when he's just about to depart for Jamaica again. Uh, saw him at the Woolsey. Uh, he was having an extravagant lunch. Doubtless he was going to expense it, as for always. Um, anyway, lots going on in the life of Ian. He was telling me that he's actually going back to Jamaica uh, to write the new one, uh, which is based on a film script that he's been doing. Uh, with this chap, uh, McElroy. Uh, evidently, he's not happy with the film script, so he's going to write a book. Uh, all seems a bit dodgy to me, but most things in life uh, with Ian do. Hopefully, it won't backfire. But I said to him, I've got a copy of your new one. I think it's absolutely marvellous. He said, well, do you want me to sign it? So I said, Ian, your books will never be worth anything. I don't want you to sign my first edition. Absolutely not. But you could tell me how it came about. It's, it's a collection of, of shorts rather than anything else. Well, first off, I must say, I asked him about the cover because he's back with Choppers for the cover, Richard Chopping. It's his third uh, cover for Ian. He started off with uh, From Russia With Love, did a great job with that. Then for some bizarre reason, Ian went back to the old guy for Dr. No came back to chopping for Goldfinger, but evidently they've had a bit of a rock now about the price. Because Ian was telling me that chopping is dissatisfied with the fee. He's desperate to keep him on board because he thinks he does fabulous work, and I must say I agree. Evidently, the fee that he has been paying him is 50 guineas. 25 guineas coming from Cape. And Ian has been topping it up with 25 guineas from his own pocket. Chopping now wants 100 guineas. Uh, Ian doesn't pay his tailor 100 guineas, never mind anybody else. But uh, it looks like the old buffer's going to be forced into it. Uh, I said to him I was a bit shocked that uh, he didn't write a full-length novel this time. But I did really enjoy uh, the short ones. So the life of Ian continues. The other thing which he mentioned to me is that evidently the short stories, or at least four of them, I think, from this uh, latest epic, actually come from screenplays that he did for CBS because they wanted to do a TV series following on from the Casino Royale uh, epic that they had a few years ago. But evidently that's been canned now. So Ian wrote them up the stories for the book. And uh, and that's about it, really. But he's firing on all cylinders. And uh, I must say, he's, uh, he's full of it. Good to hear. Um, let's start with you, Ian. What was your initial impression then on discovering that Fear Eyes Only wasn't a full-blown novel, but was in fact a collection of five short stories? Well, initially, I was disappointed because I, I love the books. I love the full novelization of these stories. Um, so I wasn't that excited. Um, but I, I found a copy on a plane and right from the start, I was hooked. Uh, there's a great introduction to um, the first story uh, from A View to a Kill. And I just couldn't put it down. I loved it. Absolutely loved it. I mean, I think on balance, I would prefer the next one to be a full novel as, as we're used to, but I thought it made a nice change. Um, and you've got five different stories. Um, two 
I'd say are very experimental and three are more kind of traditional kind of adventure, exciting action adventure stories. So overall, I really liked it. And I thought maybe he's just bored of writing books and he just wants to try something different. Maybe he's looking at screenplays. I think these, I think four of them at least would make great TV episodes. And I think even with Quantum of Solace, although it's short, I think if he fleshed it out with a bit more travelogue, I think it could be a good episode in itself. So overall, very happy with How it. How about you, Andy? Well, for me, um, I didn't like it. I didn't like this one. I loved it. Yeah, I loved it. I like the <laughs> fact that um, for me, we kind of see a different aspect of Bond in each of these different stories, you know? He's the same guy, but we see, we see, you know, um, in um, Hild the Hildebrand rarity, we see a guy that maybe, obviously, will get along to it. We actually kind of like this guy, you know. He's a guy. He's almost chivalrous. He's there uh, interceding in in what is an, in a, an abusive relationship. In Quantum, which is my favourite, he's. He's a bit, a bit of a, almost like a fish out of water. He's done a, a a bit of a Blondie Hasler operation, destroying some Cuban shipping. He can't get back for a couple of days, so he's ended up at a diplomatic dinner. Um, he's asked for a nightcap. He's thinking, oh, bloody hell, you know, uh, with the old boy, you know, after a boring dinner, this is all I need. And um, we end up going into a very humanistic um what we might call a morality tale. Others, as Ian said, you know, we, we, we start in with, with full on action, high octane, great descriptive action. You know, the muzzles of his, of his eyes. I think, uh, Ian describes the, 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 um, you know, the Slavic assailant who it isn't quite clear as we begin, if that is actually bond. Um, so for me, these, these, five stories um are great and he, i i found i don't know what you think guys but i think that to some degree through these five stories he's kind of calling out or answering his critics because it's some was it Muggeridge that was saying that is that it was sex and sadism and snobbery and all this sort of stuff you know, well, we see a bit of um, tongue in cheek, cheek snobbery in the first story with with uh, Bond running down Paris, <laughs> you know, running down foreigners, all this sort of thing. And um, but he's clearly got his his priorities right with food, booze, and hookers. <laughs> I think I think I think that makes, uh, makes an interesting point actually because for me. This represents a literary high uh, for Ian thus far. He's really branching out as a writer. And I think that he's going to silence his critics because he's really showed here the diversity of his work. Um, we've all been entertained by the novels thus far, but they have been um, often of slightly, of, of quite different types. We've had the noir of Casino Royale, we've had the uh, fantasy adventure of Dr. No, and here we land with something quite different. And I was reading, actually, in uh, the Queen magazine, Maurice Richardson made a very interesting point. He thinks that this signposts in Ian's career, uh, that he's thinking about taking a straighter path. And uh, there's certainly a lot of depth to this work. And as Andy was pointing out, particularly uh, with Quantum of Solace, um, you're seeing um, an homage to, uh, to Somerset Moore, uh, which he does very, very skillfully. And uh, I think that they are brilliantly written and they show a real diversity of, of, uh, of talent. I like them a lot. Well, maturity as well, I think. I think it looks like Fleming has matured yeah, as a writer. writer. And he's trying different yes. things. I think maybe it's down to boredom, maybe it's down to the criticism, but he's trying, you know, different styles, different tones. 
Um, I yes, think it works. It, it works very well. Definitely. It works very well. I still, I mean, I love a short story, but I, I still feel short changed. Um, you know, they're okay mm. short stories. I mean, the two experimental ones I have some difficulties with. So the opposite to Andy, because I asked myself, would I be interested in this story if it was John Bond? Uh, probably not. I don't know if I would read any more. Um, but I do salute Fleming's um, thirst for adventure with his writing and trying different things and experimenting, whether that's a result of feedback or criticism, etc. I think he's finding his feet and he's having fun and is trying something different. Um, Ian, for you, of the five stories in the collection, which one was your favourite? It's pretty close between For Your Eyes Only and From A View To A Kill. I think From A View To A Kill has the best opening right from the start when you've got the description of the the rider and he's being described like a like a big animal ready to pounce on his prey. Um, I think it's a brilliant, brilliant opening paragraph. Um, but overall, I think um, For Your Eyes Only is the stronger of the two uh, because I think you've got this... This wonderful, I mean, it's a very brutal opening scene in Jamaica with the Havelocks, and it's quite a hard read. And then when you realise that M is an old friend of theirs, he was best man at their wedding in 1925, I think it was, um, you get a more human element to the story. And it's, you, you know that M wants revenge, but he can't sanction it officially. Bond realises that, so it has to be fairly verbal, and they they have to make this kind of almost unwritten pact that Bond will go out there, take a risk, because it's unofficial, uh, go out undercover, and basically execute uh, the killer. Which is very different from the M of the previous books, where he's been quite gruff towards Bond, but you've got here this moment almost showing the vulnerability, and Bond saying, I've got you, old man, like I've got your back here. Yeah, it's, it's a very much like a father-son relationship. And M is a bit more, he's a bit warmer to Bond. You know, when he, I think he calls him James or whatever, but he's he's clearly looking for a favour. And Bond, who, you know, loves M, he's a, you know, there is that kind of family feeling to their relationship that he, he will do anything for M. And even though it's risking his own life, risking his freedom, if he's caught, he'll do that for M. David, what was your thoughts on Fury Eyes Only? I think my two favourites are um, From a View to a Kill uh, and Quantum of Solace, and for different reasons. Um, I thought uh, From a View to a Kill was uh, incredibly well written, and he captured completely um, Paris, uh, Bond's life in Paris, the way that he's picked up for uh, the mission by um, uh, a, a new, uh, the, the femme fatale from Station F. Um, and it was very tightly plotted as well. I thought the idea of um, shape uh, documents being uh, captured from dispatch rider uh, when they're on the way to Station F uh, was, was very... Uh, very well thought through, very well done. And I thought Bond's investigation into the assassination of the dispatch rider was, was very well done. So I, I liked that a lot. Um, the ending, I have to say, on From a View to a Kill uh, was a little uh, interesting because I, it, 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 it stretches the imagination that the, the double, o, double O with a license to kill would go uh, on a raid and have his gun on safety because he didn't want to uh, kill anybody. Uh, and he actually had to be saved by uh, by uh, Le Femme Fatale. Um, so that was a little innocuous. But other than that, I thought it was a very, very good, uh, very good story. I thoroughly enjoyed that. And then Quantum of Solace, I liked that a lot because I could really um, feel a phenomenal atmosphere I mean, Bond's um, on uh, on the way back after a mission uh, in the Bahamas. He's having dinner at uh, the government house, uh, probably with uh, the, well with the governor there, and you can virtually hear the crickets in the background, and you you really feel that you're in uh, in the dinner uh, with them all, 
and uh, Bond's bored. Uh, he doesn't think too much of his dining uh, companions. And then at cocktails afterwards, uh, the ambassador unleashes this incredible tale uh, about the life of uh, one of the dinner guests that uh, Bond has been dismissing as uh, innocuous. And um, it's a great... Uh, it's a great story, and it, 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 it's a leveler, actually. Bond starts to realize that other people are interesting uh, and that uh, he shouldn't take, uh, take things so, so lightly. There's a general note though, across all of the stories. I do think that there's a melancholy uh, with Bond. Um, he, he, Fleming is using these stories to really flesh out his character. And there's quite a lot of death uh, coming into the character now. And I have the impression that Ian's using uh, Bond now as a vehicle to write different types of stories that are attractive to him. Um, and um, well, personally, I'm enjoying that journey with him. And I think he's doing a damn fine job of it. Um, I, I like them all, but my two favourites, as I say, were uh, From a View to a Kill and, uh, and Quantum of Solace, but they're all good. And there's a line in uh, Quantum of Solace, isn't there, towards the end, where Bond is one of saying, well, I've got to go to Miami or somewhere tomorrow, I've got a boring job on compared to this lot. You think, well, the, the, the guy who's probably the most exciting job in our eyes, and, and he's thinking he's yeah. got a boring <laughs> life compared to what he's just heard. Yes. I yeah. it was interesting. Yeah. Uh, but as, as David said, what kicks it off? It's so clever because what kicks it off is the remark by Bond, oh, when I get yes. married, I'll marry an, an air hostess. You know, it's like saying when I get married, I'll marry a lap dancer, you know. And uh, <laughs> It's almost like he, he was saying it, it to was. be controversial or just to get a conversation going because it, you got the, the impression that he was just killing time before he could politely yeah. get away. He just wanted to get away That's from it, the whole scene, he, didn't he? So he just made one statement and it That's led right. to that and, whole story. And he was constantly, till he got hooked into this tale, he was kind mm. of, he was like, like Shin says, he was a bit bored. He was trying to wind the old boy up and bait him a little. And yeah. then it emerged. And, um, you know, for yeah, those, great stuff. Great you know, stuff. those that are going to actually sit down yeah, and really read good. this, um, you know, it's, it's really, it's almost like a tale of the unexpected to some degree, you know. Um, what yeah. what actually pans out, and the term, what a wonderful term, quantum of solace, for a a relationship <laughs> where the final vestiges of respect and and mutual, uh, you know, care and respect are gone. That's what he describes as that quantum of solace. Um, you know, it yeah, does stand surprise. out. I think. You know, yeah, and never mind lap dancers. We all know that Andy prefers the windmill girls from around the corner. I don't know where a lap, I don't know what a lap dancer is actually. Are they? from Northern Finland, David. Oh, yeah, they come from Northern them. Finland, I think. Oh, yeah. Dancers yeah. from <laughs> Northern the Emmy. See, no. Anyway, uh, I just touching on for your eyes only uh, for a moment. Um, it's interesting that Ian shows that as the title. Uh, for the uh, for the book, and I must say, I think the cover is absolutely superb. I think it's probably Chopping's best so far. Um, but that was standing the story itself. I think again the atmosphere that he evokes in Jamaica when we meet the Havelocks at the beginning is just fantastic. You know, you can imagine yeah. this sort of colonial house that they've got. They're in retirement, you know, they've been something important in their previous lives, but now they're just sort of living out the good life in the place that they they love, etc. And then all of this is sort of disrupted uh, by the by this sort of Cuban hitman that comes to uh, endeavor to buy their property on behalf of this uh, um, this Gestapo. Hammerstein. Yes, who's who's laundering mm. money by buying property in the Caribbean. Um, and, uh, and it comes to the meeting, comes to this terrible end uh, with them being murdered. Uh, but I think the sort of setup is, is absolutely 
uh, superb. Uh, and then as we go, Bond yeah. travels at M's behest to, uh, to seek out uh, this, uh, this uh, ne'er-do-well and to take him out. And it, and it takes him up to uh, near where you live, I think, Shane, yes? Right, yes. yeah. it's great yeah. Green Mountain Vermont. State of Vermont. Yes, <clears throat> and uh, yeah. I think, um, as you said at the beginning, David, that he's moved away from the fantasy here, but he's, he's also not just moved away from fan the fantasy of uh, fantastical situations. We're now dealing with, he's mentioned this guy, this dictator, the communist dictator we, we currently have, Mr. Castro. He's also yes. mentioned you. the M's also mentioned he's been in touch with the re, you know another real live living breathing character of Mr. Hoover, yes, uh, to liaise um, yes. with this operation. So we're not only moving away from fantasy; we're 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 firmly placed in our with nineteen sixty as it happens. You know? Yeah. So, um... no, I, I, I agree. I, in all of these stories, there is absolutely uh, nothing that could not happen. You know, uh, I think they're all yeah. thoroughly grounded. All of the stories. But to your, to your point about Flemings, and we've talked about this, you know, before when we've got together. You know, when, when I, I'm not as well travelled as you, David, and I know you saw a lot of the world when you were with Lord Lovett's commandos, but you know, we. You, I'm traveling the world, glamorous parts of the world too, with Ian Fleming. Meals I've never had. I mean, it's a treat to be here in Blades. I'm surprised they let me in. I appreciate the tie you lent me, Andy. But that's what I get from a Fleming book. It's transforming me. Apart from uh, apart from Moonraker, we're going somewhere exotic. And a wonderful way of describing it. Like you said, you can hear the crickets in the background. I really feel I'm on a Caribbean island, even though I've never been to the Caribbean. Yeah, and even the tra even the travel from you know over to Canada and then down through the border across a smuggler's path. Yeah. It's just brilliant. It's, it makes you want to visit yeah. these places, doesn't it? That's, that's what I love most about Fleming's work. It's the, it's the exotic locations, places I've not been to, but you, you read it and you want to go there. Um, you know, I'm not saying that Canada's probably the most exotic of places, but it's somewhere different. And just this idea of, you know, the preparation of pretending to be a, an English hunter who he's gets lost bath, going through the border, finding his way to Echo Lake. He's been tired, hasn't he? Sorry? He's, he's dyed himself in the bath, yeah. a nice warm up brown. Yeah. And, and yeah, the, thing, a... the bit, the bit I where... Quite, I didn't quite get why he did Sorry, that. Sorry, you? I didn't quite get why he did that. I mean, he doesn't have to look tanned to be a hunter, does he? I, I don't I know. But it just seems like an extreme yeah. thing to do. I like the detail. I like the gosh. detail of how he... You know the the fake papers, or getting all the hunting gear, the the clothing, just the whole travel through. I just thought it was fascinating, just very compelling, which is why it's my favourite of the, the five there's stories. One, there's one thing, and I don't know whether Ian is trying to cover his tracks with this uh, th his uh, his his um, still secret commando unit that he formed in the war, but. Um... The moment when everything's gone fine, like you say, standard operating procedure. He's, he's got there pre-dawn. He's moving down through the forest. And then he decides to have a crafty fag. Classic oh, Fleming, crafty isn't fag. it? Um, you know, it doesn't... Gasper. Be, you, know, Gasper. Yeah, you know, the, the birds are... The, the, the flora and fauna is not going to be affected. Nobody's going to smell it. <laughs> so I think... I think we have to have his crap. voices, doesn't he? So he has to have whiskey in his yeah. coffee or that's that's just a funny... Yeah, exactly, yeah. yeah. <laughs> He's trying to not make it too authentic, I think, to, to keep his tracks covered, I think, with that. Yeah. So... Uh, David, from from this, the five short stories, the secret exploits, um, did we learn anything new about Mister Bond? Yes. Uh, what my takeaway was is that uh, he, he's entering a level of maturity now, where um, his his calling is starting to weigh heavily on him, and. Um, the funding for policy, if there ever was any, which 
I think it, it's been a sort of a growing uh, melancholy that's been some as we move through his career with him. Um, he, he's uh, it's all weighing quite heavily on it in, in different ways. Um, and uh, I think uh, he's sort of obviously uh, approaching middle age and um, uh, he's not married, and, uh, he hasn't got a family, um, and uh, these things are uh, are weighing, are closing in on him, I think. That was my feeling. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think it shows a bit more of his yeah. humanity, doesn't yes. it? He's, I think in the past he was he was an assassin, yes. a paid assassin, an official yes. government assassin, and now you're seeing a bit more of his humanity. Um, you know, there's there's more morality there in him. It's, it, yeah. you know, he's, you know, he's taken the law into his own hands, but it's for the great. Yeah, and, 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 and the humanity, the humanity really shows through in the Hildebrand rarity. Mm. which we, we haven't discussed as yet. Um, I mean, that's the one basically where he's, um, he's on an assignment in the Seychelles Islands and uh, he, he, he gets through a welcome, uh, through a local contact effectively. Um, he meets a sort of this very uncouth uh, millionaire, this sort of Milton Crest character. Um, and basically, uh, he hitches a lift with it to some extent, you know, um, and he goes on his on his yacht um, and discovers that uh, there is a terrible uh, relationship between um, he and his wife and his, his wife's in an abusive uh, relationship and, uh, uh, and, and so on and so forth. And she well somebody as, as we know uh kills milton crest and um uh he's killed by uh, this uh in, in true Fleming style by somebody ramming this uh this poisonous fish down his throat uh the rare fish that he was actually looking for uh while he was asleep in his hammock and um uh, Bond uh, disposes of the body because he just doesn't want the wife to get into trouble. Uh, and yeah. I think it sort of shows a very sort of human uh, uh, side to it. Um, and as part of this journey with this awful sort of bombastic uh, American uh, uh, rich man, you know, you can imagine this sort of uh, evil character and try and run for president one day, you know? Uh, um, you can imagine. Yes. Yeah, he's, uh, he's a big bully and uh, he thinks so much of himself and, and what have you. Um, and he, he completely uh, demeans Bond as this uh, civil servant, etc. And Bond kind of lets him get away with it because uh, he doesn't want uh, any hassle. Uh, and, uh, and so on and so forth. And so we, we really see a sort of human side of Bond in, in that story. Um, and, and as we did to, uh, to some extent in all of the others as well. Yeah, it was, it, uh, it was good. But again, it's, it's... There's, an, there's another element to, with Milton Cress, he, I think it shows something of what Fleming was like. I think Fleming was a big yes. animal lover. And there's the scene where Crest yes. poisons the fish. I mean, not just yeah. the, a whole load of fish yeah. in order to catch the, yes. the Hildebrand rarity. And I think that's, you know, Bond shows his disgust. And I think that's a lot of Fleming yeah. coming out there. Um, and again, another example of Bond's yeah. humanity, you know, absolute disgust in the way that this man yes. has called this fish, you know, at the yes. expense of a lot yes. of sea life. Very, very yes. much and like Fleming. You know, beautiful description of the of the scuba diving and um, even back mm -hmm. in um, from a view to a kill the the, the description of the garden the birds flying about. I mean, there's much made of Ian's yeah. uh, you know the the hedonistic lifestyle, but this is a guy who loves conservation and loves nature as much Love as nature. he. As much yeah. as he loves beautiful women and fast cars and and uh, fine dining, 
cocktail. You know. And, yeah. But but the way it builds up, as David's mentioned, this guy's he's he is a president of his own organisation, isn't he? But you know, the way it builds up is insulting Fidel there as well, who's yes. like a, a, a the right hand man. Yes. And um, John does actually warn him at, at one point, doesn't he? He does, he does threaten to put him on his ass. you know. He, he says, you know, you, you better yeah. shut up, otherwise yeah. you're going to get hurt, you know? And he, 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 he slinks off below, and I think that's the last time you see him yes. um, alive. Yeah. And, and this thing about the, the death, it's so brilliantly written, almost maybe like a, an Agatha Christie thing in the sense that Bond, yes. because he was... This guy yes, was insulting true. Fidel. Yes, um, and also Andy we was, don't know for sure if it's Elizabeth or whether it's Fidel Barbie. Yeah, Fidel Barbie. And incidentally, it's said in the story that Fidel Barbie is um, is from a um, you know his relative had, had had something like thirty kids and all the rest of it. And and it's it's a bit it's mm. tip of the hat to Graham Greene. Um, the Greene yes. family uh, are very well established in the Seychelles, so I think that's. Um, that would that again we, 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 we're um anchored in reality there um but but yeah. the the thing about the masochism or sadism or sadomasochism with this the sting the um uh the corrector the correct the stingray tail yeah. the and corrector so we've got the corrector here and and it's awful what this guy's doing to the to the to his wife and bonds really torn up about it you can hear it you can hear mm. you know it's awful but also in from a view to a kill at one point he says to the girl you know someone she's going to get a good spanking right now Double i've smiles. heard i know you can't say too much david you know but i've heard that ian's got a collection <laughs> of some very interesting instruments and I'm not talking glockage spiels, yeah? So the question is... We're not talking correct. I don't know. I mean, when he says about the spanking, it's like, who's going to be spanking who? You know, that's that's the that's the question of how, where where is the line between Ian, Ian not our Ian Douglas, Ian Fleming, and Bond? <laughs> you know, we're doing Ian me. into Bond. It's becoming the same person, isn't it? Well, I, I'm... Yeah. yeah. We're never going to know, are we? Be careful what you say. Yeah. T talking of villains, though, which one was most memorable? Out of the five stories, which villain was most memorable for you? I'll start with you, Andy. Um, well, let me have a look at my little list of villains here. Okay, so we've got the unknown Slavs in the first story, haven't we? So that's not... It's not even identified as... as um, Smirsh or anything like that. We've got Gonzalez. Can I just interrupt there? Because that's interesting. Because yes. I think that that's the first uh, story that we've had where there has not been a, uh, a definitive dastard <laughs> villain. It, it's yeah. a teamwork. And that, that was yeah. the Yeah. Mm. yeah. They, they're, just, they're just unknown okay. Slavs. Yeah. Um, you know, and he makes no mention of anything else. Then we, then we, uh, we, we keep getting this recurring Cuban connection um, with Gonzalez, who's the henchman of von Hammerstein, uh, mm. and that is, correct me if I'm wrong, for from a view to a kill. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, von Hammerstein is germ a German former Nazi. Um, then we've got. Nazi. The, the most hurtful villain of the lot, which is Rhoda Masters. Yeah. <laughs> who Bond describes as, as he's described several women in this series. <laughs> <laughs> then we've got Christatos, you know, and then Milton Crest. So you've got a nice, it's a hard one to answer there, Shane, because you've got a... You gave the politician's answer. You gave all five. You're like Dick Nixon or Jack <laughs> Kennedy <laughs> here. Well... Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, regarding Kennedy, I mean, can you trust a man without a hat? And I'm, I'm not wearing a hat, so clearly you can't trust what I'm I'm saying. Um, no, I'm uh, I would say the most direct of, I don't know, I, I can't choose. Maybe Milton Crest, because nobody likes a bully, do they? Um, you know, we, 
it's Milton Quest yeah, for we me. We don't definitely. like bullies, especially when they're bullying women and 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 uh, yeah. you know people that can't defend themselves. So it wasn't Bond that filled him in. Somebody got, somebody filled him in. <laughs> we could speculate who, but we know with what, you know. So yeah. that's that's me. <laughs> What about you, David? Which of the villains stood out for you? Uh, I think for me it was Von Havelock and uh, Gonzalez in For Your Eyes Only. Uh, Von Hammerstein. It, it, yeah, sorry, Von Hammerstein. Von yeah, it, 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 Von Hammerstein it, it, and uh, and Gonzalez in in For Your Eyes Only. And I think um, they really made. Uh, I mean, Gonzalez with the murder of the Havelocks. He immediately. Uh, you, you, you despised him immediately, uh, and um, you wanted to see the end of it. Um, and then, when you met his uh, his um, his boss, which you basically only did at a distance, because you you met him really at the swimming pool. Uh, and there was no uh, dialogue or discussion uh, between Bond or, or or any of them. It was all handled in a shootout at the end. Um, but despite that, uh, I thought the uh, the build up was uh, was fantastic around the villains, and they they were the ones that that, uh, that really did it for me. I think in Risico, uh, the characters were very interesting. Um, you, you know, you had uh, Christatos who. Uh, uh, Turned into the villain at the end. Um, double. He's a double, isn't he? Lovely twist. He's double, yeah. yeah. Lovely um, twist. It, and um, uh, that that was that was interesting. And that was a new uh, a new uh, step. Um, I like the story, David. I, I like that one, but I did feel of all the short stories that was the one that felt the most compressed. What R- uh, in terms of location and movement? Yes. In the, yeah, in Risico. Yeah, a lot. Yeah, I think, I think yeah. could have been built into a full novel, actually. Uh, that, that you was, uh, so that, did you think that Risico was a little bit of a... It started almost like a, a rehash of Dr. No, the way that Dr. No started? Yes. Um, you know, with the blog running and... You yes. Know, Yes, so that's what I immediately yeah. thought. Oh, hello, this we've been here before. We Goldfinger with the drug running. Oh, yeah, 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 Goldfinger. yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Goldfinger. yeah there was, there was a, uh, there was a, 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 a similarity there. Um, but I think all of these, some of these stories have their roots uh, elsewhere. I mean, Ian was telling me that um, in, in For Your Eyes Only, for example, the uh, the villain that killed the dispatch rider at the beginning was Luther Kill. Yeah, for, Luther for, Kill. For Luther Kill was was originally going to be the backstory for Hugo Drax uh, nice. in Rusica. Uh, so, uh, and I noticed in in Risico, for example, um, some um, some similarity in character uh, with. Uh, uh, with and it was Enrico Colombo, um, as he 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 was not a thousand miles away from the head of station in from Russian with Love, Karim Bay. I found yes. those very similar, quite uh, quite similar as well. Uh, yeah, the sort of anti hero, you know. Um, but, um there's a lovely yeah. travel, though, isn't there, in Risico, as he's described in the, the journey into Venice. And yes. He's flexed, mm. he's yeah, he's flexed the his, his journalistic yeah. muscles yes, again. Yes, the, yes. the Venice the, location. Yeah. That's my favourite scene in in, um, in Risico when he's going to meet um, Liesl, is it Count uh, Liesl, um, on yes. the beach in Venice? Yes, it's a great it scene. Yeah. Really clever. In the minefield yeah. and, you know, you don't... Cause, before then, you don't know who really is the bad guy. You assume yes. it's Columbo and Christatos is meant to be, yes. you know, the ally. And then it switches, and it's almost like Bond has to change sides um, yes. as a result of that. And that's why it's... But yeah, the Venetian yeah. seemed wonderful. It's my favourite, personally, but it's also, I think, the weakest for that reason, that it could have been expanded. It did feel a bit too compressed, yeah. and I'd love to have 
Ian took yeah. given that room to breathe, and I think there was a novel in there. Yeah, yeah. And, and, there's, and there's the Definitely. moment a little bit, a little bit like the the crafty fag, where he he says that Bond springs from the side of the ship and lands on all fours like a cat. Now I've never seen anybody do that. <laughs> I've never seen anybody <laughs> not all fours like a cat. <laughs> But it's exciting, <laughs> isn't it? That whole scene, the whole battle of the White House is so exciting. Yeah. So I've got... And Bond, Bond gets a nice yes. reward at the end, doesn't yeah. he? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah, that's a nice touch. A nice touch with the key and all that. Very good. Yeah. Yeah, like that. So my last question before they serve dinner here is, um, out of all yeah. all of the books then, out of the previous layering books, where would you where would you place for your eyes only? It's 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 hard to sort of put it in that context because it's it's like putting you know we've got these new vinyl records um, before oh, yeah the, the, well the new forty fives now aren't they that it's, this oh, this Ragnarok in Elvis Presley is as you know that you know yes. and all the rest of them but it it's like a yeah. A longer version against the, you know, like you say, 78 against the 45. Um, it almost stands mm. separate from the canon of the other novels, I think, really. Um, yeah, I think that's a fair point. I mean, I overall, I'd put it fairly low down only because I love all mm. the novels, but I still really enjoyed this. I think it's, it's strong in its own right. And I, I think it's great that at this point in his career, Fleming has tried something new, tried something different, and I hope he does that again. However he does that, I don't know, but um, I think it makes a nice change. Um, he could do it one or two more times, I think. Depends how long he wants to write for. I don't think he wants to write for that long, to be honest. He get the impression he's a bit bored of Bond, maybe. Never, we can't be having that. I'm really excited for Bond. I want more, so come on. and No more of these short oh, stories. Too, Ian. Get, get right in the proper novels. That's what we want. Don't shortchange me again. Yeah. <laughs> Well, I hope so. I hope he does. Uh, yeah. uh, Any last uh, remarks before we wrap up? Just to echo uh, Andy's thought, actually, it's difficult to make a comparison because this one is a curveball, you know? Uh, but I enjoy it enormously, um, which is uh, is basically yeah. the acid test. I thought it was fantastic. And it is a real departure. And I think that we're going to see perhaps... Uh, uh, more departures in the future because I think Ian's taking an yeah. approach where instead of starting out afresh uh, or, 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 or stepping outside of a uh, of, of bond he, he's actually taking bond where he wants to go uh, but I hope he's not yeah. going to get into trouble with this McCraw what do you call it McCrory I hope he's not going to get into trouble with all this well that does I mean, sound this... a little uh, sounds a little shady to me. Ian has a habit of brushing over these things, like, oh, it's funny to worry about old chat. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Right, yeah. Um, yeah. No, but evidently, he, he was telling me that Dr. No was originally from going to be written for it as a movie. Uh, and of course, he turned mm. that one in, into a, a novel. Um, and he's been working yeah. with, uh, with this guy. Uh, I can't remember his name, actually. Is it McCauley or... Um, McCrory. Yeah, McCrory. McCrory. Yeah, Kevin he's McCrory. Like, oh, Kevin, yes, he's an Irishman. Yeah, that's right, Kevin. He, he, yeah. He's been working with him on this uh, on this script for a movie. Um, I think, really, between mm. the lines, they're on the verge of falling out. Mm. Uh, Ian, part, yeah, of the, cool. part of the deal with the movie was going to be that Ian would write a novel of it to coincide with the law. Oh, okay. And I think the film's a bit in the dust, but Ian's going ahead with a novel anyway, because he, well, he regards it as... Told... It is. It's I his hope problem. he's told this guy. Um, you know, well, maybe who knows? Uh, who knows? Who knows? Make... Who, knows? Yeah, who knows? Well, I hope not, because I want I want another Fleming button. I'm getting too used to them now. Yes. So, uh... Yeah, every year. We want yeah. that. Yeah, too. What about the competition we... state bit? What's going on with the? Have we got any other? You know, because I'm I'm very busy. I can't keep track. We've got any other new spy writers coming up on the the horizon, or is, is, well, is he still there? 
at, at the head of the pack? Is there a new kid on the block anywhere in sight? I don't. I mean, the usual suspects are are, are around. I think of interest and of note, actually, is uh, our French brethren. I am given to understand have got their nose well and fully pushed out of joint because they've uh, since 1947. Uh, they've had a series of books by an author called Jean Bruce, uh, where uh, there is a, a, a Monsieur, uh, 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 Monsieur de la Baf, who is an agent of OSS 117. And 117. He, yes, and he is uh, a, a, a very attractive, uh, womanizing, uh, high living uh, secret agent. And there are multiple parallels. Uh, and uh, mm. the French are sort of saying that uh, Fleming's actually ripped off OSS 117, oh. which is a little bit of a, uh, uh, I think, a little uh, difficult to believe. But uh, you, you know what? Well, well, Andy, you always. It's the movement. Andy, you always. Go ahead. It's like poor old Ian's going to get locked in a pincer movement here between the Irish and the French. Well, I'm sure, I'm sure that he'll provoke a resurgence in spy for us in the UK, I'm sure. Yes. You know, I have a feeling the 60s went to this new decade that uh, there's going to be a lot more spy thrillers to come. I think Fleming's going to inspire a whole generation yeah, of writers. There's a lot of optimism, I beg your pardon? There's a lot of optimism. Yeah. It feels like we've got, got through the yeah, yes. four years. We've had austerity, yeah. national service, all that all the miserable things, and there's a lot of optimism for the future, you know, both culturally, yes. socially, um, to the films, yes. music, books. Yeah, we're all about these objectives. Excellent. Well, Ian's, they're about to serve Ian's, dinner, so uh, we'll, we'll, to be telling yeah. us we'll go and watch the Cubans, and I think that's nonsense, you know? So you're right, Ian. Yeah. Forget about the yeah, Cubans. Everything's oh. fine and dandy. They do damn fine cigars. Yeah. On that note, thank you for yeah. joining us at Spybury. You can find everything at spybury.com. Just scroll down the page and hit the James Bond book club. And you can find all of our episodes where we dissect, debate, and tuck into the Ian Fleming novels. Thank you for joining. Yeah.